you're married. Your wife is African American. You have a daughter and a son who are both mixed. Do you, coming from the South, from Houston, you could consider that the Deep South, right? How is it in terms of racism these days, in terms of having that type of family structure? I don't know. I think they kind of speaking on deep south. I don't know. Sometimes south, but you know. Okay, it like, might not yeah, be yeah, the deep south. Minor, yeah, yeah. Okay, so coming from the south, uh -huh. how is it having an interracial marriage with with interracial kids? Have you ever felt that the racism of being in the south when it comes to your situation, where people just don't care if you're Paul Wall or not? It's um, it's interesting, man, because one aspect of it is you got to take in the consideration that the fame level of it is because if you're famous they'll let you get away with things that you know what i'm saying they you, you might see a, a klansman run up and uh hug michael jordan or yeah. something you know what i'm saying true where you where, where he might not he's still racist as fuck you feel me yeah. but but so the fame level will just you know it changes it a little bit but man i i've seen um you know texas man I'm, I'm i'm real blessed man to be to grow up in texas man i don't know what i would do if i grew up anywhere else man Texas is so we right on the border of Mexico, so there's a, a, a huge Mexican uh, influence there. Uh, you know, all, all our friends, fam we got family members that are Mexican. We got friends that are family members, friends, friends that are Mexican. We grew up around Mexicans, friends, neighbors. You know, we this is part of our culture we grew up in. Same with being on the Gulf of Mexico. We got the Caribbean not too far away. So it's a big Caribbean influence in Texas. Same way, I got a partner. We always had one partner that was Jamaican. We always knew somebody, was, you know, something like, we always knew the one Jamaican restaurant, you know, it's a part of our culture that's just embedded in it. You know, same with the Asian American community. Man, Houston has one, one of the only two airports in America that travel direct flights to China. So our, we got a huge, a lot of Asian companies that are uh, setting up shop there. So they got people that are moving from, you know, all over just setting up shop. So our, our culture, we, culturally, we got a hell of a melting pot. Okay. And then it, being that it was so racist in the past, there was such a strong force in front to fight the racism. So, you know, we were always taught growing up equality and you're not just equal, you know, but we coexist and, you know, we treat each other with respect and we, color doesn't mean anything. We were taught those type of things. So they embedded in us. There's still a lot of racism. Don't get me wrong. There's racism everywhere. Right. But I'm saying a lot of that was changed because of that, because we were taught to love one another. We were forced to love one another and we were shown that different cultures, we coexist and we you know, respect and love each other. So, uh, you know, I think in Texas, man, there's, there's definitely some racism there, but me personally, I feel the greatest amount of racism when I travel with my wife to the East Coast or when I travel with my wife uh, certain other areas, man, when we, it's way worse than it is in Texas. And we hmm. think about that like, damn, man, other places where traditionally you wouldn't look at them as or think of them as being racist, uh, you know what I'm saying? But then again, you think about, you know, like I, I, when I watched the gangs in New York, you know, there was five gangs in New York, they were all white. You know what I'm saying? And they, but they hated each other. Italian, Irish, Polish, they all hated each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it, it, we all, we're always going to pick at our differences, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it, it just, man, you know, New York, where it traditionally isn't, uh, you know, it's thought to be New York is a melting pot. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I, that's why I've always seen the, the greatest amount of dirty looks of being with my wife, people shaking their head or making little comments and couples making little jokes or saying, you know, this and that. But, you know, it, it is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? Some things never change. Do they fly the Confederate flag? Not in, in Texas. Texas. There's some people who, I mean, it ain't part of the Texas flag. The Texas flag is white and red and blue with a star. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With well, one star, the Lone Star State. You right. know what I'm saying? But, but. Texas but was part, Texas was, was a part confederate. of the Confederacy, and as a matter of fact, um, right. as a matter of fact, when Texas separated from Mexico, the big part was because of slavery. Texas wanted to continue slavery, and Mexico didn't want slavery. Oh, really? And that's why the Confederacy in America came to Texas side to help fight Mexico and Santa Ana was because of slavery. That was a big part of that. But I didn't, I didn't know you know, that. thank God we ain't got no Confederate flag though, because I'll never rep that. Right, but uh, I wrapped that Texas flag all day. Well, because for example, uh, Yellow Wolf, he, that's my he, boy too. Yeah, yeah. my dog. I know he. I, he, I, he stands I, yeah. behind the Confederate flag. Calls it, the, it means something different for him than what it means to a lot of other people. And I ain't mad at him for representing that. 
I mean, I ain't mad at him for, uh, you know, standing up for what he believe in because to him it don't believe in, it don't stand for racism. You know what I'm saying? And Yellow Wolf not a racist person at all. So right. when he say that, he not saying that I, I believe in the Confederate flag and I'm racist. He, that's just what he was, you know, that's just what he's standing up for, for his culture. But to a lot of the rest of us, it means something else. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Some people in Germany could stand behind the Nazi flag and says, and say, well, this, this don't represent killing off Jews and blacks. This represents German heritage and German history. And, yeah. you know, I don't care about all that other stuff. But th that ain't going to fly. People yeah. go see that Nazi flag and say, nah, yeah. you can't just pick and choose the parts that you want to represent. You've got to yeah. take the whole thing as a whole. And I think that's why some people have an issue. Yeah. Even Crooked Eye, who's on the same label as Yellow Wolf, sat, sat right here in this chair and said, like, he can have some of my favorite music ever. I'll never agree with him on that just because we're on the same label. We're not, we're two different individuals. The same way I feel, man. Yellow, yeah. my, that's my brother, that's my boy, but nah, I don't, I don't, that's why I say, man, thank God the Texas flag don't have a Confederate flag in it because I ripped the Texas flag hard in the motherfucker. Right. And if it did, I don't know if I would, you know what I'm saying? That might would make me feel differently about it. But that, you know, Texas, we always felt like Texas, we, separate from everybody it's like always like you know us against the world kind of type of yeah. stuff man but you know with, with 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 that confederate flag though man it's like a lot of us man you get to a point where you just ex you just tired of fighting you just accept it man it's always gonna be like this man you know i never thought man they would take the confederate flag down south carolina all that man Bree newsom man she a hero for doing that man just because yeah. the courage it take for her to do that hot man I don't know, first of all, I'm not athletically capable to climb up. A, <laughs> so I don't even have the courage to try to do that because I know I'm going to make it halfway. What do you do when you make it halfway up to take the flag down and you out of breath, you starting to slip, you getting a rash <laughs> on your thighs, I can't make it. I'll do it later. I'll now, you know, it. and then defeat the whole purpose and it just, man, when she made it up there and she, you know, I'd have fuck around, got up there and forgot what I was going to say. Shout out, <laughs> out my album and my Instagram or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, my new mixtape. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shout out World, world Star. Shit, <laughs> something shit, man. But, Funny. you know, man, but uh, I mean, just you know, me personally, though, man, it, it just sometimes, you know, a symbol or something can stand uh, for a lot of things. And sometimes it stands for some good and bad and the bad. A lot of times outside of the good. And if it, it do, then it's like, man, I can't be a part of that. You know, so, man, you're not going to see me represent the Confederate flag. That was a mutual friend in Dallas who had worked with Lonzo in some capacity as a DJ. Uh -huh. And uh, when the Boys in the Hood record started to get some, some action, yeah. uh, this dude brought those guys to Dallas. I ain't blow up because my shit look real and authentic. Not no fool, you know, foolery. Motherfuckers using CO2 guns and shit. Boy, nah, man. Nah. Yeah, no, no. Nah. Bro, it ain't like that.